Greetings, YouTube. The doctor is in. Dr. Urios Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Marvel Contest of Champions. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment. All right, it's time for another installment of the Doctor Spell Prognosis. And today we're talking about the first level spell, Jump. I am giving this spell a B+. Plus. Uh, I actually think this spell is pretty good. Uh, it can do quite a bit of stuff. It isn't limited like a lot of other spells are with, you know, concentration and stuff like that. So, uh, it is usable by druids, rangers, sorcerers, wizards, and artificers. So, there's a lot of classes that can use this. No warlock, but, and no bard, but just about everybody else. Um, because it appears on so many different, uh, so many different spell lists, it's pretty easy to get with, like, Magic Initiate and things like that. Um, it's a first-level spell. It takes one action. It has a range of touch, so you're touching, you know, your ally. It does have v verbal, somatic, and material components. Uh, it lasts for one minute with no concentration. It is a, a, a pretty long-duration spell with no concentration, so it will last for 10 rounds or an entire combat. Uh, you touch a creature, and the creature's distance is tripled until the spell ends their jumping distance so let's do a little review of jump now jumping is in a really odd place in the player's handbook you would think that it would be here under combat in movement and position but it's not it's under the chapter 8 adventuring under movement and this talks about all the different kinds of types of movement so which are climbing swimming crawling jumping so if you do a long jump, if you move at least 10 feet immediately before your jump, you cover a number of feet up to your strength score. So if you slap this on somebody who has a 20 strength, then they're going to move 20 feet um, with a move of at least 10 feet. Uh, so if you put a jump on them, then that 20 turns into a 60, which is awesome. That's that's pretty awesome. Then half of that distance from a standing long jump, which is 30 feet for somebody who has a, a strength of 20. So you don't really want to put this on someone who has a, a low strength, to be very honest. You know, if the wizard's got it and the wizard puts it on himself or herself, then... Yeah, it, it may not be so great because typically wizards have a 10 or less strength. Uh, same for sorcerers. It just depends on the build that you're doing. So it says this rule assumes that the height of your jump doesn't matter, such as the jump across the streamer, a chasm at your DM's option. You must succeed on a DC 10 athletics check to clo clear a low obstacle no taller than a quarter of the jump's distance, such as a low wall. So a quarter of the jump's distance, if it were uh, 30 feet, um, would be roughly like eight feet. Um, so, but with jump, the quarter of that distance is 15 feet. If you're doing a long jump, if you're doing a standing jump, then it's still eight feet. Um, and then if you land in difficult terrain, you have to make an acrobatic check. Now, high jumping. So this is also tripled. When you make a high jump, you leap into the air a number of feet equal to your three plus your strength modifier if you move at least 10 feet. So which means at a plus five for a 20 strength, that makes that eight feet without the jump spell. And with the jump spell, it makes it 24 feet, 24 feet up. I would say 25 feet just to, just to kind of make it even because 24 feet is one foot short of that. Um... When you make the standing high jump, you can only jump half the distance, so that would be 12 feet. Um, either way, each foot you clear on the jump costs a foot of movement. Okay. Uh, either way, each foot of you clear on the jump costs a foot of movement. Now, the question becomes, it doesn't, this spell does not triple your movement. It triples the distance that you can jump. The jump distance is triple. So, I, you know, there's some controversy about that because a creature whose movement is 30 feet still is limited to 30 feet of movement on a jump. But, um, and, and so that, you know, you kind of have to read into the rules a little bit with that. You know, really with a 20 strength, 
uh, you can jump 20 feet with a 10 foot uh, movement first. That's 30 feet total. So I'm going to assume that uh, you're going to be able to move 10 feet and then you're going to jump 60 feet um, with the jump spell for a total of 70 feet uh, of, of movement. And the same thing with the high jump. Um, that, but that's just straight up. So with a strength score, uh, a strength modifier of plus five, you're moving 10 feet first and then you're moving um, uh, eight feet after that. So uh, that's, um, you know, that's within 30 feet, obviously. And then if you use the jump spell, that's 10 feet plus 24 feet. I would, I would just assume that the jump is increasing your movement so that you're not limited to 30 feet. Because then the spell would just suck. It would just be horrible if you're still limit, limited to your, your actual movement. So, all right, that's what I got for everybody today. I think this is a pretty good spell, uh, primarily because it isn't concentration and it lasts for a while. And I think it would be good for um, for some of the frontline uh, melee fight, fighters and things like that in the party. All right, that's what I got for everybody today. I hope everybody enjoyed, and I will catch everybody later.